cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Tech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pamumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del P. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Okay, good afternoon once again uh, to all our learners who are now viewing. This is Itulai online tutorial for grade 7 English. So let me just share my screen first. I hope that everybody is still very much safe and healthy amidst this pandemic. And I always pray that this pandemic would actually end because it is really something that is very difficult for all of us. Okay, so again, welcome to English 7 for our e online tutorial. So again, it's Tuesday, and if it's Tuesday, of course, it's English Day. So today is, we are going to have week 5 for quarter 3, and our topic for this afternoon will be citing evidence to support a general statement. So with this topic, we are going to have... Uh, getting the main idea, getting the supporting details. So this is still part of improving our reading comprehension skills. So again, I would like to introduce myself. I am Tutor Drazel. So I am always with you every Tuesday from 1.40 p.m. to 2.20 p.m. That is for English 7. So these are our learning objectives for this afternoon. So at the end of the session, you will be able to First, look for the topic sentence in a paragraph that indicates the main idea. The second objective is to identify the main idea and supporting details of a paragraph. And lastly, of course, the third um, objective will be to cite evidence to support a, ge a general statement, excuse me. So these are all the three objectives, the three targets that we have for this afternoon. So I hope that at the end of the session at 2.20, everybody who have watched our tutorial session for today will be able to really have a full grasp of all these objectives. So let us now start our session with a pretest. So again, the pretest is to check what you are learning or your level of knowledge for our particular uh, subject or for our particular topic for this morning or for this afternoon, I mean. So let us start. So if you are now ready, can you give please a thumbs up? And while we're waiting for those thumbs up, let me greet everybody. Sophie, you're watching. We have Jonah, Brianna, Nicole, and we have, uh, oh, we have from eight terrible 
of Mahan High School. Thank you very much for watching. We also have San, from Sandiat National High School, Chrysaline. Happy watching. So let us now start. We have thumbs up already on our comment section. So that is a signal that we are now, they are now ready for the pretest. For our pretest, this is the direction. Each paragraph is followed by four statements. So what you're going to do is to select the statement that best expresses the main idea. So we have five items here. So we have five paragraphs also. And we have four choices for every paragraph. So now let us start with the first one. Number one, it is often said that lightning never strikes twice in the same place, but this isn't true. Go ask the forest rangers. Rangers who spend their summers as firefighters will tell you that every thunder shower brings several bolts of lightning to their lookout stations. So this is our graph number one. The choices are letter A, so we have the following choices. Letter A, ask the forest rangers. Letter B, forest rangers are knowledgeable about lightning. Letter C, lightning strikes several times at the ranger's workstation. Or letter D, it is not true that lightning never strikes twice in the same place. What do you think is the main idea of the first paragraph? Please comment down the number and the letter of your choice or your answer. Okay, while we're waiting, we have, um, let me say hi to GN, to JD, to Charles, okay, to John Christopher, to Mary Grace. So we have some answers here. Others are saying number one is a B. Others are saying it's a D. Okay, let us see whether is it a B or a D. Let us check for number one. The correct answer is a D. So Arlene, you got the correct answer. Very good. Next, let's have number two. For number two, costs were low that year and the output was high. There was a good person for each job and the market remained firm. There were no losses from fire. All in all, it was the best years in the history of the company. Letter A, there were no losses from fire. B, costs were low that year and the outputs high. C, it was the best years in the history of the company. Or D, there was a good person for each job and the market remained firm. Let's wait for the answers of number two. Let me say hi to Mamrina Tadjosa and to Mr. Rolf San Juan. Okay, we have answers now. So let us check if the answers on the comment section are correct. Okay, the correct answer for number two is... Okay, number two is letter D. Okay, so it's D. So we have answers there. Okay, some are answering A, but the correct answer is D. There was a good person for each job and the market remained firm. Very good, I say. Next, let's have number three. For number three or the third paragraph, there are great numbers of deer around here. This whole area is great country for hunters and fishermen. There are bears, mountain lions, and coyotes. To the east, there are streams full of trout, and there are ducks and geese. Letter A, there are bears, mountain lions, and coyotes. Letter B, there are great numbers of deer around here. Letter C, this whole area is great country for hunters and fishermen. Or letter D, to the east, there are streams full of trout and there are ducks and geese. What do you think is the main idea of paragraph number three? Let me say hi to the grade seven sections. 
Tulips, Lily, Orchids, Dahlia, Birds of Paradise from Das Marinas Integrated High School. That is actually a greeting from Mom Arlene Alberto. Thank you very much for watching, ma'am. Okay, let's have the answer for number three. Okay, we have answers from Sophia, from Lean, from Shane, and they are saying it's a C. Same with Hariel. Is it a letter C? Okay, very good. It's the letter C, so your answer is correct. Next, let us have number four. The fourth paragraph is about advertising. So advertising affects our lives every day. Brand names are common household words. We start each day using the toothpaste, soap, and breakfast foods promoted by advertisers. Ads have made the cars we drive signs of our success. Our choices of food, dress, and entertainment are swayed by ads. Not one aspect of American life is untouched by advertising. What do you think is the main idea? Is it letter A, brand names are common household words? B, our choices of food, dress, and entertainment are swayed by ads? Letter C, we start each day using the toothpaste, soap, and breakfast foods promoted by advertisers. Or letter D, advertising affects our lives every day and not one aspect of American life is untouched by advertising. What do you think is the answer for number four? Okay, number four, we have an answer here from Ayego, from Sedi, and from Jean. They are saying that it's a D. Okay, but according to Alexi, it's an A. Let us check. What is the answer for number four? Number four is a letter D. So the answer of Sean and Colleen, that is correct. Next, number five. For number five, this will be the last paragraph for the pretest. Number five, do you wear glasses? Make sure your glasses fit well. The earpieces should be at eye level. Don't try to adjust the earpieces yourself. Take your glasses for adjustments to the place you bought them. Keep your glasses in a case when you're not wearing them. This will prevent scratches. Keep the lenses clean. A soft cloth is best for cleaning. What is the main idea? Is it letter A? Make sure your glasses fit well. B, the earpieces should be at eye level. C, taking care of eyeglasses involves many steps. Or D, keep your glasses in a case when you're not using them. What do you think is the answer for number five? We have answers now from Sarah and from Isaiah and from Angel, Jeb, and uh, Maria Angela, let us check if their answer is correct. Their answer is a letter C, and it is correct. Very good. So the answer for number five is C. Taking care of eyeglasses involves many steps. So that concludes our pretest. Let us check whether you have answered it correctly. So those who have answered five or scored five, please react with a heart. Okay, please react with a heart if you got a five. Let me see. Let me greet Ma'am Vien Vin Luan from the head teacher's office. Happy watching, ma'am. So uh, now I'm seeing hearts in the comment section. So I saw two and three, four. Okay, there's some people who are not reacting maybe because they did not get a five but that's okay because it's still a pretest so we still have some two or three activities this afternoon so you can do well on the next activities for jade don't be sad it's okay if you only got three anyway it's still the pretest so you can still strive on the next activity so let's start so for today's uh, lesson we will be of course, defining the following terms. First, that is the main idea. We will also be defining the topic sentence, supporting details also. And of course, we will also be knowing more about stated and implied ideas. So this is the scope of our lesson this afternoon.
no. So let us start defining terms first. So to start off, let ha let us have the first question. What is a main idea? For the main idea, this would be our first definition. The main idea is the central or most important idea in a paragraph or passage. It states the purpose and sets the direction of the paragraph or passage. The main idea may be stated or it may also be implied. When the main idea of a paragraph is stated, it is most often found in the first sentence of the paragraph. However, the main idea may also be found in any sentence of the paragraph. Take note of definitions and descriptions of the main idea. You'll be learning more about this and you'll be using all this information on the next activities. Some more definitions we have. The main idea may also be split. The first sentence of a paragraph may present a point of view, while the last sentence presents a contrasting or opposite view. So to find the main idea of any paragraph or passage, you have to ask the following questions. First, who or what the is that would give you who, who or what the topic is. And then number two, what aspect or idea about the who or the what is the author concerned with? So please take note of these two questions. You are going to use them in knowing more about the main idea. So let us now read this paragraph. So this is the first paragraph that we're going to have. Again, you can read along with me there at the comfort of your own home. Let us start. Engineers create wealth for society. So tennis is a game and the resources of the earth are scarce. Have you gone mad? Thus, the only solution is to educate the public on being socially responsible. What can you say about the paragraph. Okay, what can you say about the paragraph? Did this paragraph make sense? Can you give me a yes or a no on the comment section? Do you think the paragraph that we have just read makes sense? Okay, while we're waiting, we still have some more here. Stating where they are coming from, we have from Sanjat National High School, Angel, Thailand. Okay, so according to Ayego, the paragraph makes sense. Okay, let us wait for the others. According to Jade, it doesn't make sense. Okay, now we will we will find out later. Okay, according to Kimberly, it's also a yes. To Izzy, it's a no. So we have a posted sides on our comment section. Now, does this paragraph really make sense? The correct answer is no, because it doesn't have a main idea. So if the paragraph doesn't have a main idea, of course, it wouldn't make sense. So just imagine on the first sentence, we are talking about engineers. And then on the second one, we are talking about tennis. And then there's a question about getting mad. And then the last uh, the last sentence is about educate educating the public. Okay, so it talks about different ideas and there's no relation at all. So since our pa paragraph is not making sense, and that is due to the loss of the main idea. So that actually tells us how important a main idea is in a paragraph. Now let us proceed to the main or to the next question. And that is, the main or the topic sentence. Okay, this is the definition. Many paragraphs have topic sentences and the topic sentence would always indicate the main idea. Okay, so when you think of a topic sentence, of course, that should be about the main idea. Now let us find the topic sentence in this paragraph. Now what I want you to do is to just tell me what uh, sentence, what number of the sentence would be for the topic sentence. We have how many sentences here? We have four. Okay, so on the comment box, all you need to do is just type, is it sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, or sentence four? We're looking for the topic sentence. So let me read. 
Homeless people have many problems. In winter, it's hard to stay warm and it gets too hot in summer. It's also hard to keep things safe without a home. Worst is the lack of privacy. Which do you think is the topic sentence? Again, kindly comment if it's sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, or sentence four. Okay. We have some comments here from Ayego, from Lance, from Shaina and Bea. They are saying it's a sentence one. Okay. So most of the answers here are stating sentence one. Let us see which is the topic sentence. Okay, very good. The topic sentence for this paragraph is homeless people have many problems. That is sentence one. Very good for those people who commented. Next, what about a supporting detail? So the supporting details prove the value of the main idea. Okay, again, the supporting details prove the value of the main idea. Now let us go back to the paragraph that we have had a while ago. So it's still the same paragraph. The first, uh, the first question, we look for the topic sentence. This time, we try to look for the supporting details. Which sentences are the supporting details? So since sentence one is already taken as the topic sentence, what is the role of sentence two, sentence three, and sentence four? Okay, what sentences are the supporting details on that paragraph. You're going to answer, is it sentence two, is it sentence three, or is it sentence four? Okay, we have answer from Jade and, um, and Shane. They have the same answer. It's sentence two. For Guadalquivir, it's sentence two also. So many are saying it's sentence two. So let us check whether it is sentence two. Sentence two states that in winter, it's hard to stay warm and it gets too hot in summer. Very good. So sentence number two is a supporting detail. Are there some more? Let us check. Sentence number three is also a supporting detail. It's also hard to keep things safe without a home. And of course, we also have sentence three. Or I mean sentence four, worst is the lack of privacy. So we only have four sentences on this paragraph. Again, sentence number one is already regarded as the topic sentence. And the remaining sentences, sentence two, three, and four, are all called supporting details. Because they are uh, the, de the sentences that would support. That's why it's called supporting. They support the topic sentence. So, Maria Angela, your answer is correct because you made mention about sentences two, three, and four. Congratulations. Next. So, what now are stated and implied ideas? Okay, that would be the next question that we need to define. So, let us talk about sentences or stated and implied ideas. So, sometimes a paragraph has a stated main idea usually in the topic sentence. So this means the paragraph says what the main idea is. So it's very obvious because the paragraph would really state what the main idea is, okay? So sometimes a paragraph doesn't have a stated main idea, but has an implied main idea. So this means that you need to state the main idea in your own words because it doesn't actually say it in the paragraph. So the first one, if the paragraph says what the main idea is, then that is stated. But if the paragraph doesn't actually say it in the paragraph, then it is called implied main idea. So now let us have this paragraph. So let us check if this is stated or implied. 
The students had fun on their field trip. They visited the Marine Museum. They were able to tour a tugboat and they bought souvenirs in the gift shop. After the tours, they ate a picnic lunch in the park and played with their friends. So as you can see, we have an underlined sentence. That is the first one. And the underlined portion of that of the sentence is what we call the media and is stated for the reader. That's why it's known as stated main idea because it's really obvious. It's there. You can see it. How about in the next example? We have another paragraph here. Samantha, I can't eat or sleep when you are gone. I need to hear your soothing voice and see your lovely smile. I miss that special way you sing. Please come home soon. Okay, that is our paragraph. No underlined sentences, but the main idea is not stated. So the readers, but the readers can feel that the author misses Samantha. So since the author or the paragraph Stated, then we call the main idea as implied main idea. Okay, that would be for the two examples for stated main idea, meaning it's very obvious, the idea is there. All you have to do is just read or underline it or understand it. But for implied main idea, you really have to understand the paragraph well because the main idea is not stated okay and you really have to use your knowledge in order to get what the main idea is okay now for some notes to remember let us all remember that all of the sentences in a paragraph should support the main idea of that paragraph and another thing to remember information that does not support the main idea does not belong in the same paragraph. So now let us proceed with the first activity so we can check whether we have learned the lesson that I have discussed a while ago. So for activity one, this would be our instruction. I want you to read each passage and then respond to the questions by encircling the letter of the correct answer. So each question requires to make a logical inference based on textual details. All you need to do again is to comment on the section or uh, the comment section your number and the answer. Okay. For the first paragraph, the rainforest is home to many creatures. Monkeys, toucans, and macaws live in the rainforest. Butterflies and anteaters also live in the rainforest. What do you think is the main idea? Letter A, the main idea is implied. B, the rainforest is home to many creatures. C, monkeys, toucans, and macaws live in the forest. Or D, sloths and tapirs are other creatures that live in the forest. What is your answer for number one? Which do you think is the main idea? Okay, according to Ayego and to Jean, it's a letter B. Let us check. Very good. It's a letter B. The rainforest is home to many creatures. Next, let's have number two. Soccer plays learn Soccer players, I mean, learn many skills when playing soccer. Soccer players learn how to dribble and pass the ball. They also learn how to control the ball so they can eventually score. Most importantly, soccer players learn how to work together with their teammates. What is the main idea? Letter A, soccer players learn how to dribble. Letter B, soccer players learn many skills when playing soccer. C, soccer players learn to work together with their teammates. Or letter D, they also learn how to control the ball so they can eventually score. What is the answer for number two? Okay, according to Lance, to Jared, and to Shari, it's a letter B. Is it a letter B? Let us check. Very good. It's a letter B for number two. Next, let's have number three. For number three, swimming is one thing that can be done 
at the beach. Snorkeling is another thing that can be enjoyed. Playing beach volleyball can be a lot of fun. It is also fun to look for shells. Some people simply like to sunbathe. What is the implied main idea? A, sunbathing is fun at the beach. B, snorkeling is an activity done at the beach. C, there are many fun things to do at the beach. Or D, swimming is the only thing we can do at the beach. What is your answer for number three? Okay, Shella is very fast and so is Lan. So they have an answer already and let us check whether their answer is correct. Okay, Shella, that is correct. The correct answer is letter C. Okay, very good. Next, let's have number four. Number four, winter provides the opportunity for many outdoor activities. Many people enjoy ice skating on a pond. Swimming in the pond in summer can also be fun. Skiing can be a thrilling experience too. After a new snowfall, you can even build a snowman. Find the sentence that does not support the main idea. Again, find the sentence that does not support the main idea is it a skiing can be a thrilling experience too b many people enjoy ice skating on a pond c swimming in the pond in summer can also be fun or d winter provides the opportunity for many outdoor activities okay let us check sean already had an answer for number four Okay, let us check if his answer is correct. It's letter D, Isaiah's, that's correct. It's letter D, winter provides the opportunity for many outdoor activities. Next, let's have number four. The Filipino, in fact, has a way of escaping from the rigorous problems of life. Most of his art is escapist in nature. His forefathers wallowed in the Moro Moro, the Awit, and the Corrido. They love to identify themselves as gallant knights battling for the favors of fair ladies or the possession of hallowed place. And now he himself loves to be lost in the thrones and modern romance and adventure. Which is the topic sentence for number five? A. Is it the first sentence? B. Second sentence. Letter C. Third sentence. Or D. The last sentence. Okay, we have an answer now from Shella, from Nell. Okay, which do you think is the correct answer? Let us check. Is it a letter A? Because their answers are all letter A. Let us check. Okay, the correct answer is letter A. Good job, people. You're really getting the hang of getting the main idea and the supporting details, or what we call the evidence for the general statement. Let us have one more activity. Okay, let's have activity number two. This would be the last activity. So for this one, you're going to read the passage again with me and then respond to the questions. This time we only have one paragraph and each question will ask us a logical inference, to make a logical inference, okay? So this would be our paragraph for activity number two. Listen well. Robots are being used in sumo wrestling contests. Sumo wrestling is a sport that started in Japan. It takes place in a ring. Two players try to score points by holding each other down or pushing each other out of the ring. Robot sumo uses robots instead of humans. The robot that scores the most points wins. Okay, that would be our paragraph for activity two. Now let us have the questions. Okay, what is the main idea of this paragraph? Again, what is the main idea of this paragraph? These are the choices. A, sumo wrestling takes place in a ring. B, the robot that scores the most points wins. Next, letter C, sumo wrestling is a sport that started in Japan. Or letter D, robots are being used in sumo wrestling contests. Number one, what is the answer? Okay, we have an answer here from U1 and Anisha, and they have a different answers. Okay, and let us check. The answer, of course, is letter D. So, Eliza, you got the answer correctly. Next, number two. 
which term best describes the main idea of a piece of writing? A, is it the detail? B, the central point? C, the broad topic? Or D, the aspect? Again, which term best describes the main idea of a piece of writing? Okay, let us check. Okay, while we're waiting, let me greet Alexi and Rebecca and Angela and Princess. Okay, happy watching and I hope you're learning with me. Okay, we have an answer here from Sean and he is stating that it is letter B. Let us check. Is it the central point? Okay, uh, you got it correctly. It's called a central point. Number three. Which term best describes the supporting detail piece? A, is it structure? B, substance? C, majority? Or D, descriptive? Again, which term best describes the supporting details of a piece of writing? Please don't forget to write the number of your, on the number that you are still answering. Okay, what do you think? Is it A, B, C, or D? Okay, we, while we're waiting, let me greet hi uh, to Cassandra, to Vittorio, to Harvey, to Nicole. Okay, hi and happy watching. The answer for number three, <coughs> the answer of Maret, it's letter B. Okay, so let's have the next item. It's called substance, by the way. Number four, which of the following is a supporting detail of this paragraph? A, watching robot sumo is boring. B, robot sumo uses robots instead of humans. Letter C, robots are being used in sumo wrestling contests. Or letter D, robot sumo contests are better than you, human sumo contests. Which is the detail of this paragraph? Okay, we have answers here. We have answers from Francis, from Jade, from Alexi, from Ralph, from Isaias, and from Maria Angela. Is their answer correct? Let us check. What is the answer for number four? The correct answer is letter B. Robot Sumo uses robots instead of humans. Let us have the last number for the last activity. Which of the following, this is number five, which of the following is not a supporting detail of the paragraph? Again, which of the following is not? Okay, so don't be confused with the question. We're talking about not a supporting detail. A. Okay, robot sumo uses robots instead of humans. Letter B. Sumo wrestling is a sport that started in Japan. C. Robots are being used in sumo wrestling contests. Or letter D. Robot sumo contests are better than human sumo contests. What do you think is the answer for number five? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we have answers now from Sean, from Yuan, from Kate, from Princess. Okay, let us see if, is it really letter D? Because the answer is letter D. The correct answer is letter D. So Sean, you got it correctly. Jana, Kate, Guadalquivir. Okay, your answer is D. So that is correct. Now let us check first before we proceed to the next uh, slide. Let us check your scores, please. Give me a happy react if you got a five for the last activity. Let us check your scores, please. Please give a happy or a smiling face if you got a five for the activity two. Let us check the comment section if there are already happy faces. Again, a happy face if you got a five. Anisha, congratulations. Uh, Lance also, congratulations for getting a five. And we have some more here. So, Ryan, you got a five. Congratulations. So for those who got four or three, don't be sad. It's okay. You can always play this back, this video lesson. So you can always review. So for you to learn it more. Okay. So now for my last piece, 
let me say the following. So the main idea is the central or most important idea in a paragraph or passage. It states the purpose and sets the direction of the paragraph or the passage. So the main idea, once again, it can be stated or it may also be implied. But do remember that the main idea must always be to support, uh, must always be supported by evidence okay don't forget that so when you cite the evidence that means that those are the supporting details okay so with that let me say thank you very much for um being with me for staying with me again please don't forget to tune on the e to lie every tuesday for english if you want to learn more about english and reading we are here from Tuesday, I mean from 1 o'clock p.m. to 4.20 p.m. So for comments and suggestions, you may email us at edtech at deped.gov.ph. So up next, we have the English 8 tutorial session in English. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope you learned a lot for this session. Keep safe, stay at home, and God bless everyone. Bye. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating e tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating e Life free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating e Life tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!